Hello and welcome back to Board Game Essentials. My name's Kodai, and today I want to talk about some of the Hero Forge miniatures I was able to print using this 3D printer. All right, let's get to it, and I'll show you how I did it. So here we have a view of Simplify 3D, and let me walk you through how I made this model printable for the Hero Forge Explorer model. So I just imported it, and there you go. It dropped right on my print bed. And zooming in, you can see some of the details. Great. So these are unprintable details, the stuff that's overhanging. And if we don't generate support, then the model is just going to print over thin air and it's not going to look good. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to customize support structures. So we're going to click that. And then we can click generate automatic supports to get an idea of how it will look in the beginning. So if you click that and you click done for right now, you'll see that it's generated supports on all the overhangs that thought it was necessary. And this is a great start in my opinion, but there are some areas that still need our attention. In detail, let's see, this sword can probably use some more. And this wand slash torch is going to need some as well. So, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll click prepare to print at the moment. And you can see that if you look at the feature types that these gray thing, these gray pillars are the support materials that's gonna be generated. And they're really easy to break apart once they're printed. You just kind of squish them together either with your fingers or with a pair of pliers. So let me get a top down view and let me zoom in. And using the slider over here, we can see where the extruder is moving on the 3D printer. And you can see it's building up layer by layer. And we can look at our model come to life using uh, the slider bar. We can take a look at this book over here. And we could see that if we get it at the right angle, that it's kind of it's kind of printing in thin air at first, so we, we're probably gonna have to fix that, which is no problem. And let's see, if we go back over to this sword, this sword looks okay. Let's take a look further. It seems to do okay. We might add an additional support there. But let's take a look at this torch over here. This torch right here starts off on a pillar that is not supported very well. It's literally one wall thick right here versus the multiple wall thick. So we're definitely gonna make that a little better. So let's get out of this. Let's get out of preview mode and we'll go back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click customize supports again, customize support structures. So we can gener we've already generated supports, um, but we can add new ones. So let's increase the resolution just a little bit and we're gonna add new support structures. So once you click that button, this will add new support structures wherever you click. So let's say I wanna add one here, I can click one right there. And you can overlap on these, there's, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, it ju it'll, just add, it'll just add more support structures and be thicker exactly where you click it. So uh, let's definitely make a bigger one here for that guy. That looks okay at the moment. And then we're also gonna add one probably here. Let's do, let's just, let's just beef these up a little bit more. And we'll do that, change this to one one millimeter so we can get up in here underneath the sword uh that might need that definitely probably needs some uh the, the most the most amount of help See, if think. you mess up you can always click remove existing supports and just click wherever you want to remove it and it will it's pretty easy to use you just gotta tell it where you want it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click prepare print and let's see how the model came out this time around so as you can see Let's take a look at this wand first, or this torch. I keep calling it a wand, so I'm gonna use that interchangeably. So it definitely beefed up the support structures right there, which is great, but it still kind of prints in thin air. That might be okay. I, I'm not terribly sure, but I would definitely want it to be 
a little bit more thick on that side. So you know what? I'm going to actually add some more, some more support right there because I definitely want that to print correctly. It's a main feature of this. So you're going to keep clicking add support structures. There you go. Look at that. That looks pretty good to me. See, it's, it, it made that, that little support right there. That should, be, that should be pretty good in my opinion. Yeah, that should be pretty good. Uh, let's go back to this book. That book looks fine to me. And the sword. See, again, this is just kind of hanging. These are just kind of just in cases, in my opinion. Also, you might be asking, how come I didn't add any support structures along this sword? Well, when you click... Well, let me let me hit exit preview. When you click this support uh, structures button over here, you can set the max overhang angle. Be able to handle 45 degree overhang, or it might be able to handle 55 degree angle. So this is something you're gonna have to find out what your printer can do. Luckily on Thingiverse, there is a lot of max overhang angle print files that you could find, and then you can print and find out what exactly your printer can handle without supports. Those, those files are pretty awesome, so you can get a better handle on what your printer is capable of, but I'm gonna leave mine at 45 degrees. So that's generally my process on how to supports to a structure. So that's generally my approach on adding support structures to a model, and it's fairly important to do so on these overhanging ones like these arms and these weapons that these miniatures normally have. And let me exit out of this and show you what I ended up with. Okay, so as you can see, this is the file that I actually printed. This is the support structure that I came up with earlier for the standing model and for the 45 degree overhang angle. So I had to add a ton of support structures here for that. As you can see, I might try a 90 degree one later, but this was a good, uh, this was a good trial, I think. Real quick, I'm gonna show you guys some of my other settings. I'm going to re-add the original Explorer back. So let's get that back in there. And here she is. So if I double click my process, I have an infill percentage of 10%. And this is all fairly standard, the rest for my Prusa original i3 MK2. So if I go over to layer, I just have top, solid top layers of five and bottom of five. And I don't think I have anything in additions other than I'm using a skirt. And my infill, I didn't really mess with this too much. I just left it at 10%. Then I used this other tab here, and what I actually printed with was around four, whoops, I actually printed at 480. So if I print at 480, and I'll show you that 480 takes about an hour and 30 minutes. So why I printed at that speed was, is because it would just take too long if I went slower. <laughs> I might have to go slower in order to get some higher fidelity. I'm not actually sure, but I think the model came out pretty well as is. If I change that value to, let's say, 80, let's, let's see how long it takes. See, a miniature to take eight hours on a printer, I mean, I don't think that's the best like reward ratio on like time and effort. So I, I think 480 was pretty good and pretty decent enough. I might try an eight hour print of this tiny miniature in the future, but for now I think this is good. So let's take it up top and see how they printed. Don't forget your safety glasses. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so what I found on this first model, the one that I printed upright, is that the supports did well, and that's always good. And some of the sword on the back that's on that she has on her back, some of it came off, I believe. I'm gonna double check the model when I get back, but overall, this looks pretty good. Um, there was some stringing, but not a whole lot, and. Um, you can still see a lot of lines, but 
at a distance, I mean, I know exactly what this character's holding and ha how her hair looks and and some of her armor. Yeah, I, this came out great. So let's see how this one compares to the one that I tilted at a 45 degree angle and printed. So let me get to that. All right, so I finished the second, removing of the second support material. And wow, um, a lot of the features on the back are, for lack of a better term, demolished. And it could have been my removal of it, but it, some of the features didn't print well at all. So like, especially like this base at a 45 did, did not print very well. As you can see, it came a little flimsy. It might be my support structures in Simplified 3D, but that's something I gotta check later. Um, and then I wanna, I wanna point out this sword. The sword stayed attached, kind of, but it, it curved inwards and it, it just looks really funny <laughs> to me. Um, the front details, if I compare them to the, the previous one, I don't know if I see a, a big, big difference. Yeah, I just, I'm just seeing lines in different directions versus, versus the lines being uh, symmetrical like this. They're just, they're swirling, they're swirling at that 45 I was talking about. So I, I'm not sure which one I like better, at least on the face. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think I'm gonna leave this one up to you guys and see what you guys think. Which one came out better? Is there anything I could do better to print these guys? So mainly the reason why I'm doing these things are is it's a learning process and printing miniatures on an FDM printer is hard enough. And so I think that's gonna wrap up the miniatures I wanted to show you today from HeroForge.com. And if you guys have any tips or tricks to dial in my settings, I'm using Simplify 3D. And I'm using the original Prusa i3 MK2 for my printer. So, and with that, I hope you guys have a great day. All right, take care.